if you've been following the news, you know that the people of our country are divided over our country's response to the coronavirus pandemic. Some people think that the response has been overboard, that uh, restaurants, businesses should have never closed. This idea of wearing masks is silly. It's really infringing upon our freedom as Americans. And then you have other people who believe that our country should have acted more quickly and that would have saved lives, um, that perhaps we're opening up too soon. And people should wear masks, right? As a way of caring for other people predominantly. And so you have strong opinions on both sides of this issue and the news doesn't help, does it? And I think this is part of it because you just don't know who you can trust, right? And that's even led to conspiracy theories. And so there's just a lot of information out there and it's really hard to discern what's accurate, what's true and what's not. Um, I think as Christians, um, we are called to a higher standard. Um, Paul in Ephesians, he, he writes in, in chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And so, if you are a Christian, I want to encourage you that no matter where you stand on our nation's response to, to the pandemic, that you hold that position first with humility. Um, humility is, I think what humility means in this situation is I could be wrong for one. Um, and you know, I know that if it, I, that I could be wrong, and so I am going to listen, and I'm going to understand other people's viewpoints, and I'm not going to parade around with an arrogance of I got this all figured out, and my position is a hundred percent certain, and so I just can't even listen to other people's thoughts and ideas gentleness. So I, I think um, how we even stand firm on the position that we have, we still need to be able to do that with gentleness and kindness. And we can express our viewpoints in a way that is loving, in a way that is gentle rather, rather than very argumentative or uh, combative. And so I encourage you, no matter where you land on this issue, that you would be clothed in humility and gentleness. And you would allow people to think differently than you without judging them and uh, thinking less of them. Um, they may have good reasons for why they think the way they do. And I really encourage you to be a listener first. Um, be slow to speak, quick to listen, James says, right? We as Christians, we need to not fall into the trap of behaving like the rest of the world. Um, this week, we're going to be putting out a plan in regards to how we plan to reopen the church. And we're allowing a life group to get back together this week. And on January, or not January, June 21st, we're going to have a first, our first service. And, and these things are going to look differently than what they normally do. Um, but we're going to be sharing that plan this week, so look for that. But one of my concerns and one of the elders' concerns is that this what our plan could cause division. Um, and we're really praying against that. We know that our enemy would love to use anything he possibly can to divide the church. And so we're praying against that. There may be things about the plan that you agree with. There may be things about the reopening plan that you disagree with, and that's okay. And, but we encourage you um, to trust the leadership that they've been praying about this, that they've had a lot of conversations about this, and this is what we think is best overall for the church. And may you be a unifying voice, and may you be willing to set aside 
maybe your preferences uh, for the sake of the, of, the, of the whole church. And so I want to encourage you to do that this week.